Forest rangers and campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Part 4, please subscribe and like to show us your appreciation. Account 1. Was hunting public land with my dad, several miles from anything close to a trail. So the day goes by and not much is going on. Weather is shitty and I'm not hearing distant gunshots. So I reckon the deer aren't moving much. I radio to the old man that I'm gonna head back and we make plans to rendezvous where we had split up that morning. Twenty or so minutes later I was kneeling around the edge of a pond, stripping off all my bulky camo layers. I was just fucking around, putting stuff in my bag while I listened to my earphones. I can't remember if I had taken my blaze orange hat off or not to remove my pullover, but I had all the appropriate gear to denote myself as a hunter in my possession. As I was digging through my bag, I thought I heard that faint bass of someone yelling. So I took an earbud out and noticed that crouched on the opposite edge of the pond, there was a lone forest ranger kinda just watching me. I stood up but didn't wave, and I wasn't sure he had even yelled to me in the first place so I didn't holler anything to him. We just kinda locked eyes for what felt like a few minutes. To be clear, we weren't doing anything illegal. My rifle was unloaded by that point, though slung over my shoulder, obscuring the fact the action was open and were following all laws and regulations, I hunched back over to my bag, pulled out my walkie and radioed to my dad, we've got company. My motives weren't nefarious, I just didn't want my dad to come bumbling down the hill and be surprised by a friendly law enforcement officer. I looked back up, maybe 15 seconds later, that ranger was gone. I mean, flat the fuck out gone. So eventually, I meet back up with my dad and start to tell him about what happened. Yeah, as deep back in here as we are, he probably thought we were up to no good and hit the trail when he saw you on a radio. They get ambushed like that. As someone who gets nervous, anxious around cops, it never occurred to me that I could be causing similar anxiety in them. If you're reading this DNR, bro, I'd like to offer you a heartfelt, my bad, and keep up the good work. Account 2. When I was a kid in the Colorado Rockies, I was taking my horse and the whole band of dogs we had, two labs, an Aussie and a dachshund, to our pond by my grandparents' place. I decided it was a great idea to venture the back way through the thicker part of the pine forest. I knew the way, and so did the animals, horse included. About five minutes from the house, I was oblivious to the world and didn't notice that the dogs were no longer with me when I finally decided to come back to the real world and noticed the missing dogs. I turned back since you don't go anywhere without them. They were basically my guardians and supervisors up there. I get about halfway back to the house, come up a small gully heavily filled with pines, and there is this huge Tom Cougar just staring at me. Right in the path I'm eight at the time. A little guy and a tasty morsel for this animal. Luckily, I had the horse, who upon seeing the animal immediately bolted directly back to the pasture. The cat seemed to run after us. Didn't really watch. We roll up into the drive, head towards the pasture, and I agree that this ends my adventures for the day. After I put the horse up, the dogs find me again, and we are walking back to the house when they get real jumpy and timid. I stop and begin to look around. There is a large and old pine splitting the distance between the pasture and the house, and on the lowest branch I see that damn Tom again. Luckily, the presence of the dogs deterred any action, but I made it a point to pass far away from the tree, and as calmly as I can I tell my grandpa what happened. He goes outside, rifle in hand, and never found the bastard. To this day, I never venture out without a dog or a weapon, just in case. Account 3. My grandpa had a hunting buddy in the 70s who was basically a hermit in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. He was staying with him in his cabin deep in the Cascade Mountains during a hunting trip. No running water, no electricity, miles away from the nearest town or paved road. His cabin was built on stilts and on an incline. It had a 10F balcony from the base of the bottom of the stilts with no stairs or ladder to climb up on. My grandpa claims that he knew this man for a long time and said that he didn't have the personality to lie. I've also known my grandpa to never be one for bullshit. One night during the trip, they were relaxing at the cabin after a hunt and his buddy tells him that Sasquatch is in the area and to be careful going out at night, thinking he was pulling his leg. My grandpa chuckled and didn't think much about it. 
His friend then put on a very serious face and grabbed a few pieces of fruit, bread, and jerky and placed them in a bowl. He took the bowl out onto the balcony and set it on the edge and said, It'll be empty in the morning and then went to bed. It was an open floor single, room cabin, about 300 SQFT. My grandpa had a cot set up near the balcony window and was woken up in the middle of the night by rustling outside. He peeked through the window and saw the bowl, empty, and to this day still claims he saw four fingers resting on the edge of the balcony just before letting go. He never went hunting in that area again. Account 4. I was in the forest camping out under the lovely forests of Jersey. We set up camp and were all chatting in our tents and left the fire up so we can tell some great scary stories. All was going well until we heard a rustling in a bush. Textbook scary story stuff. We all think it's one of our friends who hasn't come back from the potty break. But just as the bush was rustling, we see the outline of a person circling our tent. We call out for our friend, but random person does not answer. And at this point, he stops in place. We all start getting freaked out, as the person we see from outside could not possibly be our friend due to the height difference. One of the members of the group lies saying that we are armed and kill him. A good minute goes by before we all hear what I can describe as the most shrill scream I have ever heard and dude just up and leaves. Creepy part about this is that our friend who was out to the restroom says he heard said scream but saw no one around the camping area or even footprints of where the man should have been. We were also pretty deep into the woods as well, so it's not as if anyone who was just passing by could have found us, at least not easily. Account 5. My dad spoke to a Chinese woman who lived as a forest survey person up in the mountains for the past 30 or so years. This is in Canada about five years ago. As an unofficial sort of person, the government asked about when looking for forest fires, any sort of illegal shit, etc. She says that she spotted multiple Sasquatch, and that they are quite intelligent and just don't want to interact with people, not even the young ones. But if she's out there, they're pretty chill about it because she grew up around that area and remembers seeing them from a young age. She had a totally straight look on her face. And my dad said she's one of the most rational people he'd seen out there. He owned a strip of gold claim out that way at the time. And she said if he knew what was good to leave that land alone because digging it up would disturb a lot of shit in the area, and she wasn't sure it was a good idea, my dad wasn't so sure until he swears. Up and down, he saw one himself, and she said, That's the female one, and just went inside and left him out there to take the fuck off running. Account 6. So I'm a guy who is in the other end of these stories. Fall of 2017. I shot a deer right around dark about five miles out of my truck. I go back, get my gear off and grab my cart. I get to my deer, gut it quick, and head out. Well, about two miles in, my deer cart breaks. The wheel snapped clean off fuck. I had to sling the fucker on my back. About that time I heard some coyotes, I'd say three or four, faintly on the gut pile. I go another mile before I take a break. I'm chilling there, listening to the yotes when it hits me like a hard tap on the nuts. They were much louder and many more yips than earlier, within a quarter mile, and here I am sitting like a fuck waffle with no weapon but a hatchet and gut knife sitting next to the second course of their feast. Now, of course, the first three miles from my stand consists of fairly easy walking, dry, some thick spots, but overall a easy walk. But the last two, swampy as all hell and thicker than a motherfucker. I picked up, zigzagging through the swamp, running on adrenaline, not looking back as the easily dozen coyotes were about a 100 feet away. I never once stopped and never once looked back. On the home stretch, I hopped the five-foot gate with the deer on my back like it was nothing, though I collapsed on the other side, nearly passing out. I heard the coyotes hit the fence within ten seconds of my jump. They howled and snarled and screamed at me, who was clinching the knife ready to meet my maker, from the other side, and then just like that they were gone. The woods were silent, and I hobbled back to my truck and grabbed the deer. I called my dad and told him my story and told him I was tired and was going to take a nap in the parking lot. I was bloody as hell. Scratches and cuts and bruises from branches hitting my exposed face. So I took a nap and was woken by a tapping noise on my window and then a bright light. 
I don't know who was more scared, me or the greenhorn DNR officer, wide-eyed, slack-jawed, and baggy pants staring at the monstrosity I was. I told him the story, he checked my info, and we had a good laugh, and I went on my merry way. Now those who are going to ask why I didn't just drop my deer and let them have it, I don't know. It was only a five-point, not very big, a very average deer. I'm just a stubborn fuckstick who doesn't think things thoroughly. But hey, the deer was yummy. And for the DNR officer that I have a new brown set of undies too, I've seen him on three occasions since, all three ice fishing. He calls me wild man and doesn't even check my information, nor does he check my fish. We talk quite a bit when we see each other. I consider him a friend, actually. Bonus, I shot another deer about a week later from the same spot and was tracking it when I heard some more yotes 100 feet ahead of me. I had a pistol with me this time and unloaded a clip into the ground and they fucked right off. They slinked behind me, silently making a yip now and then, and I'd respond with a 9mm round in the dirt. Account 7. Late to the party, but a fun story. I live in an urban area, but grew up in the woods. I, I caught an Uber to a local land preserve for a hike, had a good 20 minute chat with my driver en route. He was swearing up and down that he saw a flying dinosaur in this park. Amused, I press him for details. He tells me that he was walking there and sees a huge black shape fly up into a tree. It wasn't some hawk or crow, it was a fucking dinosaur. I laugh and inform him that he had stumbled across the rare dino turkey. He goes quiet for a moment before busting out, God damn it. My buddies are never going to let me live this down. It totally was a turkey. I didn't know those mofos could fly. Count eight. I've had some weird stuff happen, but I'm probably the cause of a lot more unexplained sightings. I used to spend a lot of time in the forest near my neighborhood. It's a small strip of trees that's biggest inhabitant is a fox. I got into vulture culture, taxidermy about a year ago. I've always been a fan of zoology, and being able to look at animals in a different way is incredibly interesting. When I was getting into it, the fox in the forest had just had kits and was hunting over time to feed them. I started kind of an exchange where I'd pick up bones and such from around the den, and if I found fresh corpses elsewhere, I'd leave the meat around the den instead of wasting it. Unfortunately, this garnered me the reputation of outcast. Horrible dead animal lady from most of the kids who like to play in the forest and noticed me carrying bags of rotting animal parts around. As far as I'm aware, none of them actually knew anything about me, aside from the rotting meat and the time I accidentally busted through with a bunch of live snakes, so that should pretty well cement their opinion on me.